and hello there everybody welcome back to my channel I do hope you're having a good day and welcome back to another video so today you join me for something completely different now I am going to be delving into the world of model repairs so without any further ado let's get right on into it All right then guys, so I'm actually talking to you here on voiceover instead because the audio that I recorded real time with this video, I was just rambling a lot and I wasn't really getting my words out. So essentially what is happening is I have got the TNT 737-300 that I purchased for about 12 pounds from eBay and the Southwest 737 Max 8 that I'm unable to use. Um, take a look at some of these defects with, with the model. So this has just come from wear and tear over the years. We've got this chip over the cockpit and we've also got this horrible smudge down sort of on the side of the model, which really make it pretty much useless, obviously to use in an airport update because I'm based in the UK. And it also makes it pretty much worthless in terms of selling it on because of those defects and nobody is really going to want to buy a model with those defects for anything like the price that I managed to buy it for originally from Gemini Jets. So my plan is I'm going to restore the TNT 737-300 to its former glory using this Southwest 737 MAX 8 as its as my baseline. So obviously uh, the main thing that I'm going to have to use is the landing gear, but I'm also considering using the elevators as well because one elevator was missing when I picked up this TNT model. So eventually my uh, my sort of goal for today's video is going to be to get the TNT aircraft to a standard where I can put it in an airport update and showcase the beautiful livery because it is a aircraft that I would really love to be able to operate at Will Scarlet International but at the moment it just simply isn't possible so let's get right on into it. So then the first task was to remove the existing landing gear from the bottom of the Southwest Max. Now this took me about five minutes and it wasn't too difficult at all. Alright then, so it's taken a little while and unfortunately I've actually had to leave behind the plate that the landing gear was originally attached to, but I have managed to get the nose piece of landing gear off. Now obviously this isn't in the entirely originally moulded piece, I've sort of had to sever it where it meets the body behind where the landing gear doors are, now that's because I can't get that piece right up at the top there out, but actually I think that that's probably okay in this case because if we look at the relative size of the 737 with the landing gear. Once I position it in there, I can't really show it on camera very well at the moment uh, because I've got both my hands taken and I can't really operate the focus. Um, but I'm just gonna sort of try and demonstrate that in terms of size, that doesn't look too far off. So as long as I position it correctly in there, I think that that should be all right. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. Managed to get it off with sort of quite minimal damage to, um, to, to both models. Obviously that nose set of landing gear isn't gonna be very easily replaced, but if I really need to, then I am gonna be able to get it back on that Southwest aircraft. So if I ever do feel the need to sort of revert it to its original condition, then I do very much at the moment feel as though that is still an option. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna size the, these, these landing gear up. Now, obviously I think that actually the 737 Max landing gear is much bigger than yeah so we've got quite a significant size difference in the max um landing gear and this dash 300 i'm possibly thinking that actually we may have to do a similar thing as we had as we had to do with the nose gear and we may actually have to take um the hold on just let me get it into focus I'll try and stick it to a finger stick to a finger so you can see we might actually have to take this top plate that goes into the model off in order to get this to fit the 737-300 correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a quick sort of play around with that and see what my options are in terms of that and then we're going to have a look at fitting them. All right then guys, so this, this process so far has actually gone really smoothly, like infinitely better than I thought it was going to. Now I've managed to separate all of the wheels from their respective bits on the aircraft. That's the nose set and these are the two under wing 
Now, because the 737-300 is a smaller and lower aircraft, I actually had to account for the difference in height in terms of the landing gear, especially with this set under here. Now, these are the pieces that I have detached from the um, from the 737 Max's underwing landing gear, and it's sort of the pieces with the little bits that come out to protect the wheels when the aircraft is on the ground. I'll put up some clearer photos, but essentially I knew that with this piece added, then the, then the wing sets of landing gear would be too tall and it would look odd and out of proportion. So what I've managed to do is I've managed to separate this flat top section with the actual stalks of the landing gear there. Um, so I'm hoping that this is going to be much more to scale in terms of the height of the rear landing gear, gear columns and it is not going to look completely out of place. So actually I'm not entirely sure but I have a feeling that I'm on the home straight now. Now the other thing I have to do is attach the stabilizer to the back but I'm not going to do that until I have finished the landing gear. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is position, maybe I'll try and do the front set of landing gear first. I feel like that's going to be slightly easier because at least it has this sort of, this sort of cradle to go into. Um, with the landing gear doors there, they are either side. This is sort of just going to be a case of slotting it in, getting it the right way around, and then gluing it and holding it in place until it's dry. And then I'm hoping that that is going to hold quite fast. These are quite strong models. Now, obviously, this isn't going to be factory quality. I'm not sort of aiming to get this to be factory quality. I'm aiming to get this to the quality where it'll sort of stand on its own and not look completely ridiculous in an airport update at some point. So yeah, I'm going to pro probably time lapse this bit because it's probably going to take quite a long time and quite a lot of fiddling around. But yeah, ironically, actually, the tool that I found most useful in this process, you might have seen it in, in one of the clips, is this. Now, this is a really, really cheap, I think it came from a pimple popping set originally. Now, this is a really, really cheap sort of thing. It's sort of essentially just like a, a, a stick of metal with sort of a, a ball with a hole on the end sort of like a half sphere and essentially it was really useful for holding over the wheels pinning it in place while I took while I sort of rubbed away the um, the top section of the rear landing gear with the knife so yeah that was really useful and you know creativity if it, occasionally you can't go wrong with it using a tool that it wasn't designed for but actually it really works so I'm going to get to finding some appropriate glue to use and we're going to start to attach the landing gear to this incredible little model all right then, so I've managed to find a thing to just jig the fuselage of this model up against just so that it isn't completely loose because essentially this is going to be the really delicate bit. Now I have got some Loctite. Um, now the reason I've chosen this is because it's obviously it's a very strong glue but it obviously has a sort of quite a thin nozzle at the end of it which I'm hoping is going to make the sort of the glue delivery um, as clean as possible and mean that there's going to be as minimal mess. Now I'm now also debating as to how I'm going to do this. So I've sort of got two options. Now this is the landing gear piece that is going to be going in the nose set of landing gear. I have got, I think it's probably better thinking about it to actually put the glue sort of in the gap for the nose thing and then just put the gear in on top. I have a feeling that if I try and get the glue on this piece itself, it is probably going to be an awful lot easier to mess up. So yeah, that's probably actually, yeah, I'm good. That, that's what I'm going to do. So then it has just occurred to me actually that there's no reason that I can't just put the sort of the, the fuselage over there and carry on working on the wing. So that's exactly what I'm going to do just to save a little bit of time so that I'm not waiting around between takes. So this one is going to be a little bit different. I'm not actually entirely sure how difficult this is going to be. I have a feeling that it's sort of going to be okay. Let me show you what we're working with here. So we've sort of got, obviously this is where the wheels would fold up into on the real aircraft. But if you can see just above my thumbnail there, we've sort of got a little bit of a groove, sort of like a channel where the original landing gear molding pieces would have been glued into. I have a feeling if we just sort of douse that with a little bit of glue in the same method that we did before using this, um, this pick thing, I reckon if we then do the same as we did on the nose gear and just drop it down with the tweezers and hold it for a couple of seconds, I think we might be golden actually. So that's sort of my plan. All 
Right then, so I've managed to get the landing gear to stick there of its own accord, but what I'm not happy to do now is actually do the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it probably the best part of half an hour to an hour. I'm going to make sure that this is properly dry so that I don't knock it out of place when doing the other one because I feel like that's what I'd do and then I'd obviously eliminate all the effort that I've made so far to get this one in. So I'm going to come back in about, I don't know, maybe half an hour's time and then we're going to look at doing the other landing gear and also the elevator at the end, which should be pretty simple. All right then, so welcome back. Obviously that's just a cut for you guys, but I've been away for about 20 minutes just answering some comments and doing some other bits and pieces. So I believe that this glue is now probably dry enough. Yeah, that's all okay. I mean, I'm not gonna put too much pressure on it, but at least I'm not gonna knock that or brush it um, very slightly. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna look at doing the other um, of the um, wing set of landing gears. <laughs> All right then, so I've managed to secure the landing gear in place. Now, it isn't perfectly, perfectly straight. I've tried to make it as straight as possible, but also propping it up has been really difficult because it's kept falling over. But yeah, that's all good. So essentially, I'm going to leave this probably overnight now. I'm not going to do anything to this until the morning. I'm just going to leave this all here just to make sure that it has set fully. And then in the morning, I'm going to come back um, and with the click of a finger, I'm going to take you guys there now and then we're going to take a look and see if we can reassemble this aircraft and whether I think that it's going to be of a good enough standard to go in a WSI update. Then guys, so good morning. It has been around about 12 hours since I've done anything for this video. And since then, these pieces have just been sitting here drying. Now, as you can now see, the wheels are slightly skew with, but I have to say I'm generally really happy with the effect. The glue is now all fully dried, both on this rear set and also on the front set for the fuselage. Now actually giving myself a little bit of space to think overnight has actually also um, sort of stirred up another idea within me to do with the elevators. So obviously I only have one of these, only one of them came with the model when I bought it off eBay. But it occurred to me I'm not going to be using this Southwest Max anymore. And so I might as well just take both of the elevators off of this Southwest Max one so that I can have matching ones. Now I have compared the size of these compared to the Dash 300 ones. They're ever so slightly longer and ever so slightly more pointy. But I think actually that is going to look less weird than it would do having sort of, you know, uneven ones. So one with the original and then one sort of with, with the max one. So essentially that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look to, actually I can probably do it now. I can just assemble this model back together with the landing gear and look at how much of a big difference that makes to the feel of this model. I mean, I'm so, so happy with the way that this process has gone so far. I do feel sort of as though I'm over the worst. I was really worried about these rear sets of landing gear and don't get me wrong, I haven't done a perfect job. You know, the wheels are too covered in glue, the, they sort of don't really roll anymore, which they did before. But at the end of the day, I'm still really happy because I'm sort of getting ever so closer to being able to use this model. So what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the um, elevators off of the Southwest 737 Max, and then we're gonna look at fitting them onto the TNT. So then, me and the editing process back with a little bit more voiceover just to explain what's going on. So long story short, what happened is I removed the stabilizers from the rear of the Southwest Max, but there was a little bit of a problem. You see the tabs that went into the fuselage and secured the stabilizers into the body of the aircraft, they were in a different place on the more modern Max model than they were on the Dash 300 variant. So essentially, I, ha I just had to remove those little metal tabs attached to the stabilizers so that the stabilizers would glue more securely into the TNT model. All right then, so I've managed to rectify that problem by taking off the tabs of these elevators um, with just a junior hacksaw that I had lying around. That's really good, it's sort of a, you know, a, a little bit more of a precise tool than, than a standing knife and obviously it's much easier, it's much better at cutting metal. So then, there we go, I'm pretty sure I haven't actually tried this, perhaps I should have done. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so they will now fit quite comfortably in the slots for the Dash 300 
um, elevators. So that's really good. What I think. Gonna... Right, and we're just going to put a dash of glue. It's probably actually going to be easier to do this vertically, isn't it? Thinking about it, I don't really know why I'm thinking of doing this horizontally. So if I put this back in the in the sort of make, makeshift jig that I've that I that I used for the nose landing gear. And hold it down in there. Right, and that's now holding itself in place, so just gonna give it another dab of glue in there. And hopefully that's at around about the right angle. Yeah, that looks okay. So yeah, I'm just going to rest that down and leave that to dry for about 20 minutes to half an hour before I can then work and do the other side. Obviously, because I don't want to knock, I don't want to knock the work that I've already done on this side. So I'm going to do that and then come back in about half an hour. Okay then, so about 20 minutes later and I'm back to do the other elevator. All right then guys, so welcome back. Now I'm sorry if this has been a little bit of a cutty video. I suppose this is the thing about this sort of video and this sort of content, it's like, you know, you do something and then you have to wait for the glue to dry so you go off and then you come back and then you do something else and then you have to go off again and then you come back and so I've probably done a whole load of cuts in this video somewhere along the way um, during the editing process so yeah sorry about that but I have to say I think that the end product here is really really good I'm just gonna assemble the aircraft fully so that we can see it in all, in all its glory and I genuinely am really really happy with the way that I've done this and for a first attempt, I think that I actually did really well. And I'm gonna pat myself on the back here a little bit because this aircraft looks infinitely better than it did when I bought it. Um, and essentially, you know, it's, it's sort of able to be used at WSI now. So let's just sort of take a little quick look over. Yeah, so we've got the front of the model. Obviously, you guys have seen this quite intensely already, but the, the, the things that I've done, so we've got the nose landing gear at the front there. Um, that is okay. I mean, in terms of the height, perhaps it's a little bit too small. Maybe you should be able to see a little bit more of the stalk there. But actually, when it sits down flat, I mean, it doesn't look as though it's particularly leaning forwards. In fact, actually, yeah, it's still sort of got a leaning backwards tendency. Um, so maybe I can see if I can do something about that. Um, in terms of the rear landing gear, I've also secured them. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to keep the wheels rolling on this model. They do no longer roll. And that's just due to the amount of glue that I had to use in order to secure the landing gear pieces in place. And then the last thing that I did was the tail plane. Now, I'm really happy with this as well. I mean, obviously, the possibly the elevators do look a little bit too big. And there are some paint scratches from where I was sawing off the, uh, the elevator tabs so that they would fit properly. So don't get me wrong, this isn't a perfect model whatsoever, but I am just so happy for a first attempt at this model. I actually think that I don't think I could have done much better with zero experience. So there we go, the TNT 737-300. You can expect to see this aircraft in an airport update very, very soon. And I'm just super happy. Let's take a look one more time at the donor aircraft. As I've already said in this video, obviously it is a shame that I've had to sort of take components off this aircraft in order to make this one a reality but ultimately I just think it is you know it's a, it's sort of a situation where I've got a model that I can't use and that I can use the components and make a model that I can use and I think the end result I'm really happy with so that's going to be it for now thank you so much for watching I really do hope that you enjoyed it and maybe found it useful let me know if you guys have done anything like this in the past how it went feel free to dm me any photos or questions over on my instagram page i'll leave a link down in the description below for that one but for now i'm gonna say thank you very much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye